Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Michael. I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch today's message and I pray that it encourages you, builds you up, and helps you to believe that your greatest days are still ahead of you and not behind you. And a special thanks to every one of you who give generously to help us to continue to share the life-saving message of Jesus. And I wanna encourage you, if this blesses you, consider joining us in generosity so that we can continue to see people far from God come to Christ and lead and experience the God first life. Enjoy today's message. We jumped into a series last week called God Didn't Say That. And really the idea is to go deeper into scripture. Um, God's really been uh, stirring my heart to get our, our church uh, grounded in the word of God. And so this series is really about tackling some uh, half-truths and some mistruths so that we will know what the Word of God says. Because people say things with conviction, they say it with a heartfelt belief, but when you study the Bible, things we say aren't actually in the Bible. Uh, and so that's why we're talking about these topics. You know, I, I, I've heard this a lot, God moves in mysterious ways. How many of you have ever heard that before? Uh, how many of you have ever said that before? And yes, God is supernatural. He, uh, he, he's amazing and uh, he is uh, too, too, too great to grasp in certain areas. Uh, but the Bible doesn't say God moves in mysterious ways. People do. And we understand that. But we're going to get biblical. We're going to go into the word uh, because it's so important, especially uh, as American believers and what God wants to do in this new season. You have to understand that after this last year, uh, a season uh, for the church has changed. In fact, a church age has changed. We are in a new church age. I believe that we are in the last age before the return of Jesus Christ. And I believe that there's one thing that COVID-19 did, it separated marginalized Christians it, it, it revealed uh, who's really committed to the cause of Christ. And again, that's not a knock. My point is, because you're, dri- you're dialing in online and you're leaning in, that's not my point. My point is, is that God is inviting us to draw near and to be a part of this end time movement, but it's going to require an all in, lay down your life, take up your cross and follow me kind of faith. No longer can it be just a weekend kind of here and there. It's got to be this full devotion and love and passion for Jesus, and I know I'm talking to the choir today. I know online you're here today. Thank you for joining us. We are together in person and online. We're gonna grow deeper and closer to God because we wanna be a part of what God's gonna do in this final move. Amen, everybody. And so I wanna get you fired up around the word. I I read this this past week and it bothered me. 80% in 2018, 80% of American Christians when asked, is there another way to eternal life other than Jesus, 80% believe that there was. And, and again, it seems human reasoning and logic that sure, of course God would let them in if they were trying to be good and they may have been worshiping another name. And a, no, no, that is not what Jesus said. And Jesus Christ, if you want to know truth, you must look at what he said and what he did. You you must understand his, his reason for being crucified was because he said he was the son of God. And so his word is truth. And he said that heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. And so we're going to jump into this today. Who's ready to dig in? You ready online? Come on, are you ready in house? We're going to look at this. Maybe you've heard this. Um, You know what? You don't need to be concerned because God is in control. God is in control. How many of you have ever heard somebody say, God is in control? We've said it. We've all said it. And and I want to kind of unpack this. This is a very fun. We're going to have fun today. We're going to have a lot of scripture because I want to get a lot of scripture into your heart. I want to, I get you for about 35 minutes a week. So I've just decided in this series, I'm going to pack in some word today. And I want you to take the word home. That's why we're selling Bibles in the foyer. We have teen Bibles. We have children's Bibles. Get a Bible. And, and I love the Bible app. But listen, it's a fact. There's nothing like getting a Bible in your hands with a pen and a paper and a pad. In fact, studies are showing now that electronic ebooks, uh, you don't retain as much as you do in hand. 
And again, they're a good tool, but we, we want to get the word of God in your hand. Come on, somebody. You know, there's nothing like getting a cup of coffee, getting the Bible in the morning and saying, God, speak to me. I am ready to meet with God. I need a word from God today. And so that's why we're challenging you to get into the word. And we're going to look at this first one. God is in control. God is in control. There is no specific scripture that says God is in control. But we can read that God is sovereign. God is supreme. He is Elohim. He is the author and the finisher. He's the creator. He's all-knowing. He is all-powerful. But to say that God is in control of everything and every decision is not biblical. I know, we're gonna, we're gonna go. And again, don't just trust me. We're gonna go to the word. There's a lot of scripture to support that God is sovereign, that God is the author and the finisher of our faith, that God is supreme. But to say that God is in control of everything expresses helplessness. In other words, sometimes we can shun the responsibility of doing our part and put it all back on God. And I'm just telling you, it's not all God. It's, it's, it's God and us. Could God do it? Yeah, but he chose to want to do it with his sons and daughters. It's like a father being in business, having his own business. Uh, sure, he could just be the man for, for all of his life, but his desire most of the time is that he would do business with his sons and daughters. Sure, he can make all the decisions, but he wants to bring them in. And that's the way God is. God could have done it, but the way he created it, he wanted a family, and he wanted a kingdom of sons and daughters to do kingdom with him. And so when you look at the word, we're gonna see what this actually has to say. Let's unpack the Lord's prayer here. Matthew 6, 10. Jesus said, may your kingdom come soon. May, everybody say may. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We just sang the song. So why would Jesus, the son of God, teach us to pray that God's will would be done if it was just gonna be done automatically? So may your will be done is what Jesus encouraged us to pray. If God is in control of every decision and action, I thought about this, why would we even pray? If God's gonna do it all, why do I even need to spend time praying? And I think if I think God is in control, I think maybe it dismisses me from the responsibility of partnering with God and actually praying his will into the earth. Are you with me? And so we, 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 we pray because God has said, I want you to partner with me. See, prayer is a choice. It's typically our last resort, but it should be our first response. And God has really been stirring my heart again for prayer. And so be in prayer with me because I really believe there are gonna be some prayer gatherings and some worship gatherings because I believe there's a hunger in the people of God to come near, to commune, and to create God's presence, his atmosphere, and to worship and pray and seek his face and and I really believe that strongly in my heart. And, and, and I think just in the last 20 years, the way the church trend went, I believe that what COVID did is it's bringing us back to some things that we forgot how valuable and important they are. And, and, and there's a, a, a revisioning that I feel like, God, I'm so excited. And it's gonna start in the word of God. Is he sovereign? Yes. And by the way, that's why we're bringing back First Wednesday on May the 2nd. Come on, somebody. And so we're bringing in a guest worship leader uh, from Hope City Church. This, this guy, has he's just a great leader. He's saying uh, uh, he, he's just a great worship. He's going to come in, help lead some worship. Uh, we're going to have some prayer. We're going to do communion. And then and afterwards, we're going to hang out and have a little bit of an after party and connect. So make sure to be here for First Wednesday. It's actually Cinco de Mayo. But we're not passing out Coronas but we are gonna be drinking from the new wine. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Is God sovereign? Yes. Are all things working together for those who love God? Yes. Not for everybody, but for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. See, all things are only working together for you if you're pursuing God and seeking his face. Are you with me? And so that means that my good decisions uh, are important. Life isn't about chance 
but it is about choices. Life is not about chance, it is about choices. What is God's will? Let's start here. I wanna show you real quick three aspects of God's will. Because sometimes we say things like, God's will is a mystery. I've met believers who have been in church for 10 years and I talk to them about serving and their purpose and their walk with God and, and they'll say, I don't know what God's will, if I only knew what God's will was. And see, you can know what God's will is by opening the Bible. You don't need an audible word from God. God has already spoken to you in the Bible. And that's why when you read the Bible, the Bible will speak to you. See, the Bible is different from other books. You read other books, but the Bible reads you. Because it's alive. It's living. It's breathing. Are you with me? So let me give you three aspects real quick. Let's establish this, and then we're going to go on to some, some activation and mobilization. Three aspects of God's will. These are things you need to know if you're online. You, you want to be taking notes. If you're in the house, open the app. Take some notes. This is going to be good. You're going to want to go back over these scripts because I'm going to hit you with it. You ready? Here's the first aspect of God's will. It's sovereign. God's sovereign will. The first aspect of his will is it's sovereign. We could say it like this. It's unconditional. Like no matter what you do, this is going to happen. For instance, creation. Creation, there was no choice. It was God said, let there be, and it happened. Uh, sovereign will would be the, retur- or the coming of the Messiah. The Messiah was coming regardless of anybody, right? This is the sovereign will of God. The Messiah must come. He was slain before the foundation of the world. This is going to happen, and it did. The return of the Messiah, the resurrection of the Messiah. These are unconditional sovereign actions of God's will. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth whether you want it or not. So we see there's the sovereign. Ephesians 1, 11, let me give it to you. This is scripture. In him we have attained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. And see, if you read that, if you don't understand that's talking about the sovereign will, you're gonna think God's working everything out according to his will the way he wants to when he wants to. So there's the sovereign will. Acts 2, 23, we read it on Easter. God knew what would happen. His prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed with the help of lawless Gentiles. You nailed him to a cross to kill him. So yes, God has ultimate authority and ultimate power. This is where we see God's sovereign will. This is going to happen unconditionally. You see, there is a portion of God's will that is conditional. This is where we come in. This is where our free will. See, God gave us free will. God gave us free will, and he doesn't go back. He won't contradict that. Even though he could, he won't because he will not go back on his word. See, when a king makes a decree, it becomes law. Do you remember when King Darius said that whoever uh, you know, bows down in prayer will be thrown into the lion's den and, and he found out Daniel did it and they set him up. He was upset, but he couldn't stop it. Why? Because when a king says something, it becomes law. And even a king can't change it. Do you remember when Herod uh, said, I'll give you up to half your kingdom to Her- uh, Herodias, or his wife's daughter, and she said, give me the head of John the Baptist. He was like, oh my God, I didn't think you were gonna ask for that. But he had to do it. Why? Because when a king says something, he can't change it. It becomes law. Are you with me? And so we see the sovereign will. Here's the second one, God's general will. General will. We could even say God's moral will. Mark 1. The kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. God wants you to hear the good news of Jesus and to repent. He wants you to turn to him for forgiveness. He wants you to turn to him for salvation. He wants you to turn away from evil and doing wrong. He wants you to turn to him. 1 Corinthians 6, 18. Run from sexual sin, exclamation point. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. So we see this is God's desire. It is his will that we not practice and engage in sexual immorality. Anything outside of biblical marriage, anything outside of biblical marriage between a man and a woman. And so this is God. God gets to define this. This is his will. It is his desire. Why? Because it protects us. It doesn't keep us from anything. It keeps us and protects us and releases blessing on our life. And so we see that this is God's will, yet people reject the gospel. People engage in sexual immorality. 
He said, love God, love people, but do people do it? See, this is God's will, but people still don't do it. Are you with me? And so we see that this is the part of God's will where we have to come into agreement with. That's why Jesus said, pray like this. May your will be done. May your will be done. Because see, our faith and our agreement, it plays a part. And we know what God wants, but we still have to. See, if God was in control, don't you think every believer would be fully surrendered to God? Come on, somebody. Your walk with Christ is still a struggle and a battle every day. What's the battle? Your will versus his. Y'all gonna help me right here so I can move on. Uh, I'm gonna talk to online for a second. The, so that's why, you know, when it comes to following Christ and laying down your life, we have to deny ourselves. Jesus knew it was going to be a lifelong battle because we're, we've got the sinful nature. We wanna do what God wants us to do, but then, then, then we don't do what we should do. And, and so there's this wrestle, you see. We know God's will, but we... We need to come into agreement with it and do it. It's kind of like my kids. I love my kids. They're doing so great. I mean, uh, I, I'm just so encouraged. They're, ser they're all serving God. They're, they're all walking in love. They're working, and they're just doing so great, and they're growing in so many ways. But I was thinking about uh, one thing that we're learning around our house right now, because they are still in the house, and, um, and, and we, we, we're okay with that um, for now. And... They may leave stuff out in the house. I don't know if your kids do this. Maybe your kids take everything and put it in its proper place all the time. But our children, sometimes, they'll leave things in other places of the house. So what I do, one of my techniques, is I take their item and I set it on the steps because all their rooms are upstairs. And I'll take their item and I'll nicely sit it to the side, not in the middle, but on the side. And that is my indicator of dad's will. Dad's will is that you take this and put it in its place. Can I tell you, there'll be days <laughs> where it will sit. They know it's Father's will, but they have to come into agreement with it and do it. Are you with me? That's my moral will. That's my desire, but they have to partner. They have to say yes. So there is general will. Let's look at the third one. God's desired will. God's desired will. It's a lot like the general will. So we see what God wants. I mean, think about these scriptures. If you knock, the door will be opened. If my people pray, I will forgive and heal. Uh, when you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. When, watch this one. I'm gonna slip it in on you. When you bring the tithes, the first tenth of your income into the storehouse, the local church, so that there's provision for the vision. When you do that, God will open up the windows of heaven and release the blessing. So whose part is going to unlock the heavens, God's or mine? Come on, say it with me. Say amen or oh me. So if I wanna live under open heaven, is it my will or God's will? It's God's will, but I have to come into agreement with that, and if I want open heavens, then I bring the tithe. But what do we wanna do? We wanna create conditions and separate. No, no, listen, it's very plain. You wanna know God's will on giving and bringing the tithe? You just bring it. And when you bring it, he promises I will open and I will release blessing upon you and I will prove myself that I am your provider. Your job is not your provider. The economy is not your provider. I alone, God says, am your provider. And please give me an opportunity to prove myself as a daddy because I'm a good daddy but I won't go against my word. I may bless my kids when they don't take their shoes up the stairs, but God's a better father than me. He, he won't do it unless I do. So when you do, I will. Choices, alignment, God's desired will. Let's look at it. He desires that this would happen. Look at what Jesus said. Oh, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather your young children together as a hen protects chicks beneath her wings. Oh, how I wanted to do it, but you wouldn't let me. Wow. 
God wanted something and they wouldn't let him. You know, it reminds me of that time Jesus, who was a healer, he could heal blind eyes, cure leprosy, raise the dead, open up deaf ears, cast out devils. The Bible says he went to his own hometown and he marveled at their unbelief because they discerned Jesus after the flesh or as a human or a person. They're like, Messiah, that's just Jesus. That's Joseph. I knew Jesus grew up. So Jesus went to his hometown and marveled at their unbelief. And the Bible says he couldn't do any mighty works except lay hands on a few people and see them healed because of their unbelief. So I ask you, what was the difference of Jesus in Capernaum than G and Jesus at the wedding at Cana? What was the difference in that Jesus and the Jesus in his hometown? Nothing. Same Jesus, same power. What was the difference maker? Faith and agreement. Are you with me? And so we wanna come into agreement with God because we want what God wants. We want what he desires. Second Peter, the Lord isn't really being slow about his promises. Some people think, no, he's being patient for your sake. He doesn't want anyone to be destroyed. Did you hear that? Did you hear the word? He doesn't want anyone to be destroyed. Now, sometimes I think Christians do, but God does not want anyone destroyed. He doesn't want anyone destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. Aren't you glad that we serve a mighty, merciful God? He wants every person. The meanest person you know, can I tell you, God wants them to be saved. The hardest heart that you may have encountered, can I tell you, God wants them to be saved. The person that you have an issue right now, don't forget, God wants them saved. I don't know who you are today. You may have thought that God didn't want you to be saved, but let me give you the word, okay? Let me tell you what God really said. He wishes that you would repent. He wants you to come home. He wants to give you forgiveness. He doesn't want you to perish. That's why he gave his son Jesus to pay for your sins. But you must accept that gift. Would you believe it today? Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. That's awesome. Watch this. When we pray, he moves. When we witness, he saves. When we give, he blesses. When we pray, he answers. So there's a difference between power and authority. See, God is all powerful, but he's choosing to give us some of his authority. Genesis 128, Adam and Eve, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion. Everybody say dominion. Amen. Dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air over, of the heavens and of every living thing that moves on the earth. So God says, I want you to give, I'm giving you dominion in the earth. Did you realize that when Adam was in the garden, that God gave Adam the authority to name the animals and whatever he called it is what it was. Isn't that powerful? See, God gave us dominion and authority in the garden. But watch this, because they got out of alignment with God's will. Was it God's will for them to eat from that one tree? No, it was not. Did they do it anyway? Yes, they did. Why? Because they had the power to choose. And so in the garden, dominion and authority, the, the, the authority that had been given to man was now stolen by the serpent, Satan. And so now that's when death and sin, destruction and evil entered into the earth. Why? Because the enemy had dominion now over the earth. And see, that's why we can't get mad at God and we say things like this because we really believe God's in control of everything. I can't believe God let that happen. And you need to know that there is demonic, satanic elements in the earth that God didn't say, let that be. Are you with me? God takes way too much of the blame. But God is a good God. God is a faithful God. Yes, he can allow things. But let's not believe that God caused that. Why would God, allow, as if God, lets, see, that's where we've got to come to this place where there is free will, there's demonic activity, there's God's will, there's man will, there's God's sovereign will, his desire will. Are y'all with me? So there's these different elements. That's why we've got to know the word or we will be shipwrecked in our faith. We'll give up on God. We'll give up on community. We'll give up on people. That's why we've got to come back to the world. Jesus comes 
To do what? To destroy the works of the devil. He comes back and he takes the authority of death, hell, and the grave. In Matthew 28, he came and says, I have been given all authority in heaven and earth, and now I'm giving it to you. See, Jesus is seated on the throne now. Jesus didn't even come to preach the gospel and raise the dead and heal the sick. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, to go to the cross and get the authority back that was lost in the garden. And now he says, I'm going away. I'm gonna be seated on the throne, but I'm giving you this authority. Go into all of the world. Preach the gospel, raise the dead, cast out devils, heal the sick, establish my kingdom, establish and occupy till I come. And it is time for the sons and the daughters of God to realize their authority, to take their place, to stop letting life happen to them, but go out and make life happen for them and realize the devil has no authority in your life when you are submitted to the word of God. Come on, somebody. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. Whatever you permit, think about that. How powerful is that? will be permitted, permit, that's, a, that's an act of the will, permission. Will you let God be the Lord of your life? Will you let God be your leader? Will you permit God to lead your marriage? Will you permit God to be the center of your life and of your family? Will you permit God to be the Lord of your finances? Will you per- See, it's permission, whatever you permit. According to his word now, this is why you gotta know the word. So it's like, I permit the lottery numbers for next Saturday night to show up in my email. No, that's not what we're talking about. Now, we're, that's selfish ambition. Are you with me? And I promise to tithe on it, Jesus. Are you tithing now? See, don't think if you had a million, you start tithing because now you got to give 100,000. And if you can't give 100 on 1,000, how can you give 100,000 on a million, right? Will you permit God to, to show you that he's provider? Whatever you permit, permit the blessing to come into your life and then through your life. Let me just say that about your giving. The giving isn't just about you being blessed. It's about what God wants to do through you in the earth. See, when I wasn't following Christ, there was no blessing happening in the earth through Michael Turner. It's what God wanted before the foundation of the earth. But until at 25 years old, when I finally surrendered fully to Christ and went all in, now not only was I being blessed and healed, now blessing and healing was flowing through me for the last 26 years. Are you with me? And God wants the same thing for you. That's why he needs men and women and students and families to come together to say yes, Lord, and to submit, to surrender to his will, to walk in the blessing and to obey the word and to trust it so that blessing can come on your life and then blessing can come through your life into the earth for the glory of his name. And it's where you're most satisfied and he is most glorified. Whatever you permit. James 4, 7, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. You feel like the enemy's been coming at you? Do you know the word gives you the victory instruction here? Submit to God. Sometimes we try to resist the devil without submitting to God. Once you submit to God, you can resist the devil, and he will flee. Why? Because he has no authority over you. Romans 12, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let, everybody say let. Man, I really want us to get this in the body of Christ. Let God transform you. Again, permission. Will you give God permission to transform you? See, we wanna change, but until the pain of doing what it takes to change is greater than the pain of staying the same, we'll never change. So let God transform you. How? By laying hands on you. By singing this song. Coming to church. No. How? By changing the way you think. And this is where we get into the part of how do I know and do God's will? It doesn't just come from you having more willpower. Come on, how many of you are like me You've tried to serve God and to do his will in your own will, power. I failed miserably. 
When I was before Christ and I was trying to go to church, even the first six months, I failed miserably trying to do good. Why? Because I didn't realize I wasn't permitting God to transform me with his supernatural power through his word. But once I committed to reading this word and stopping other junk from getting into my heart, I began to read the word and all of a sudden transformation happened. All of a sudden, I didn't cuss anymore. All of a sudden, I didn't desire the things that I used to desire. All of a sudden, I had no more taste for the things of the world. Why? Because I let God transform me by the power of his word. Are you with me? I knew I needed to change when I was playing basketball uh, with the church group, and I cussed out loud. <laughs> it's like, I can't help it, bro. I realized I had an issue. I'm like, I gotta fix that. But it wasn't just me trying to go, Hoo! It was the supernatural word of God that transformed me. The word for transformed there in the Greek is metamorpho. It's where we get our word metamorphosis. It's the idea of a caterpillar going into a cocoon and then metamorpho happens and it comes out totally different. Are you with me? So when you go into the word of God, did you realize you could be born again by the spirit of God, but until you renew your mind, you can't experience full transformation? So get the word of God in you. That's what we're gonna spend the last few minutes doing. Are you ready? Here's what we're gonna do. Number one, how can I access the power of God's word? Number one, I gotta read God's word. I gotta read. I don't like to read. I'm sorry. That's the first negative thing you gotta tear down in your confession and belief system. Start saying, I love to read. Come on, somebody. You know what? Look, I love to read the Word of God. That's what you need to start saying all the time. Battle that negative thought. Don't give excuse. Don't give way to that. That's just your carnal, lazy mind. No, no. You say, I want to be transformed. I need living bread. Father, give me this day daily bread. Man shall not live by Wendy's and Longhorn alone, but by every word. That proceeds from the mouth. See, it's not just proceeded. God still wants to speak. Mm, I've got to go. Look at this, 1 Peter 2.2. 2. Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk. I want to ask you today, what are you craving? What are you craving? When you think about the word of God, is there a craving? And it's okay if you say, I'm not sure there is. That's why we're having this talk. This doesn't mean to guilt you. No, no, this is for you to pay attention and become a self-aware crave the word of God as babies crave milk. Come on, how many of you have ever had a little baby? And when that baby got hungry, everybody on the block knew it. My mom said when I was finished with my bottle, I would throw it up against the wall as if to say, I need another one. I got two bottles. So crave the word like a baby craves milk. What are you craving today? Maybe you've lost your crave for the word of God. You know what? It's okay. You know what you can do? Get back into it and say, God, stir my hunger. Have you ever gone to a restaurant and you're with a friend? You're like, I'm not really that hungry. And they're saying, well, I'd like to eat. Will you just come sit with me? Sure. I'll just get a glass, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe a cup of coffee. And then you get in there and you look at the menu. You see those pictures. You're like, you know what? I think I will have an appetizer. Looking at the menu stirred your hunger. Get your eyes in the Word. Start reading it. Read it. You don't have to read it all day. Just read it every day. Read it. That's why we have Bible plans for you. Get, get a plan and read the Word. Commit to the Word. I, I wonder, could you, for the next seven days, on this first day of the week, for the next seven days, could you commit to reading the Word of God the first thing in the morning? I promise you, if you do, you'll see something start to move on the inside of you. I've got to go. Number two, meditate on God's Word. Meditate. So don't just try it for a couple of days, give up and say it doesn't work. No, no, you gotta be persistent. Look at this, Joshua 1.8. This is something that I'm meditating on right now. These two scriptures, it's very powerful. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that's written in it. For then, everybody say then. Watch this, you will make your way prosperous. What? Did you realize you can make your way prosperous? You don't have to take the thoughts and the lies of limitations in life or in America. Well, I could do this if, no, no. Your God said, if you meditate my word day and night, you'll do what's in it, and when you do what's in it, you'll see the results of obedience. You see, 
Obedience is the key to blessing. And when you do what's in it, you make your way prosperous and you have success wherever you go. Did you realize God wants you to have success? He wants you to have success in the things that really matter. Here's the, here's the second one. Delight in the law of the Lord. Meditate on it day and night. They're like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit in each season. Their leaves will never wither. Watch this. And they what? Everybody say it with me. They in what? Some things. How would you like to prosper in every area of your life? Would you like to prosper in your mind? Come on. How many of you believe some Americans right now need some prosperity in their peace of mind? in their relationships, in their marriage, their family, their finances. When you meditate the word of God and you, and you think about it and you, 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 you ponder it and you, you it's, the idea is this, this is kind of gross. Now I'm not a farmer, never have been, but from what I understand, cows chew hay. You ever heard that term, chew the cud? Well, a, a cow has four chambers in his stomach. And what that cow will do, he picks up that, he gets that hay in his mouth and he chews it and he can't fully break it down. So he sends it down to this first chamber and then there's bacteria in there that start to break it down a little more and it shoots back up into his mouth. <laughs> Gross. But that's how he breaks that down so that he has nutrition in his body. And if it doesn't break down, he can't receive the nutrients from the, the thing that was created and intended to bless his life, the hay which was given by God. And God gave him the system to get the nutrients so that he'd be healthy and strong. Are you with me? But the cow has to chew the cud. And see, the child of God has the authority of God, the word of God, the power of God, the promise of God. But until we read the word and meditate the word and we chew on it, we think on it, we can't break it down to see the power that's actually contained within it. See, in order to get the treasure, you gotta dig a little bit. That's why Proverbs says, seek my word as silver. I told my kids, seek God's word like you do for your phone charger. I ain't never seen a teenager not find a charger, even if they steal yours. Like, get that desperate for the word of God. May God stir your heart to search for his word like hidden treasure. Meditate it. What promise are you needing to meditate on? Some of you are facing a challenge right now, whether it's fear, whether it's sickness, whether it's uh, division, whether it's uh, healing in your body. Did you realize there are promises? Would you get that promise and memorize it, think about it, speak it? See, we meditate, we don't know this, but we meditate sometimes on negativity. You ever gotten upset with somebody and you're walking around having a conversation? I can't believe they would ever do me like that. I can't believe that brother just pulled out in front of me. Did he not see me? And what are we doing? You are meditating. You're chewing on the wrong thing, <laughs> right? You do that with the word. You read it, you meditate it. Then lastly, this is the final one that we're gonna pray. You speak God's word. See, the word of God is a two-edged sword, but it's not a two-edged sword until it comes out of your mouth in faith. It's a two-edged sword. It's living, it's powerful. So I've gotta read the word, meditate the word, and speak the word. It's like the woman with the issue of blood. She had gone to the doctors and spent all her money, and she couldn't get any better. One day she heard that Jesus was passing by, and she said, within herself if I can only get to him. Jesus wasn't even stopping by her way to do a miracle in her life, but she saw the promise in the Son of God. She knew it had power. She said within herself, what story are you telling yourself? What lie are you believing today? What narrative has the enemy weaved into your mind about God and about another person or a situation? It's time to get God's word and say to yourself, if I can just get to him, I know everything's gonna be all right. If I can just get to him, I'm gonna be healed. If I can just get to him, this thing's going to turn around. If I can just get to him, my kids are going to be all right. My marriage is going to be restored. My finances are going to be, my business will come back. And then some, if I can just get to him. And Jesus is the word of God. I want you to stand with me, would you, as we close?